Okay, I see something. Hello. We are live. Let me share this to our page. And Jen, if you want to share to your page. I'll try. I can't promise anything. <laughs> okay. Let's see. I'm at the event. Happy Boxing Day. Happy first day of Kwanzaa, everyone. There we go. All right, here everybody is joining in. We will get started here in just a second as we get all of our tech aligned. Okay. Is this like another conjunction? Is this like <laughs> conjunction of 2020? Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see. 23 people in here already. What Roger Wilder. Hi, Brad and Jen. Hi, hey, Roger. Hey, Roger. Hey, congratulations <laughs> on Lila's scholarship. That's so exciting. Yeah. That's some impressive okay. fellowship there. Yeah. All right, everyone, welcome. It's our big boxing day holiday hoorah uh, surprise <laughs> live event. Um, hi, Jen and Brad. Would you like to kick us off here this evening? Sure. sure, sure. Thanks, Stacy. Good to see you, Stacy. <laughs> we thought it would be fun to do um, kind of a holiday retrospective of our production of The Nutcracker and The Mouse King. It's been a few years since we last did it, um, but it's a very uh, near and dear production to our hearts. And um, we just wanted to spread some holiday cheer. So Brad, do you want to talk a little bit about the, the origins? Yeah, sure, of, about how like how it, how, it, uh, how it came to be. Um, well, our Nutcrackers uh, started um, as a musical production with People's Liberation Big Band in 2006. And then we did the first dance one in, in 2009. Um, but it's like if um, I think the history of the Nutcracker itself is is a little bit interesting, just in in that people think of it as as this the, this holiday tradition that's been going on for forever or something. Um, but it's it's uh, it's it's really not. It was it was written in uh, the story was written originally in 1816, and the the, the original E. T. A. Hoffman story is just this sort of convoluted mess I, I mess in in the most glorious sense of, of the term mess it's beautiful but it's but it's just a it's it's this really dark and thorny and, and confusing sort of story um and then that wasn't made into a ballet until about 80 years later 1892 1892 jen's got all the dates there actually they're right there. here <laughs> And, um, and the ballet was based off, off the uh, Alexander Dumas version of, of the story. It's much sweeter and, and lighter and, and, um, and doesn't go off on the strange tangents that the original story did. Um, and then I guess the first American production of the ballet was in 1945, 44. 1944. And, World War II. Yeah, they couldn't get any male dancers. Yeah, all the men were was, fighting in the war. Um, <laughs> Actually, here's an interesting story. So, um, was it Lou Christensen or um, one of the William brothers, Christensen William Christensen? Yeah, he choreographed the first one. His brother choreographed another one ten years later. Yeah. But they they went around to um, sports teams um, looking for for male athletes, like high, um, high school you know <laughs> high school football players and stuff to, to try and recruit them to perform uh, in the Nutcracker. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. yeah, and so then. It was like 10 years after that, the New York City Ballet did their first version, George Balanchine did it. And then in the intervening, say 10 to 15 years, then it became something that every ballet company in the United States was doing. The holiday tradition. So, but if you sort of think companies. about it in that, in that context, then it sort of comes into, it's like being, you know, sort of ubiquitous around 1965 or so. So we're talking about something that's sort of on the same kind of timeline as Charlie Brown Christmas or something, you know, in terms of like how long it's, it's been around. Um, anyway, it's, it's, it's fun, fun. But you, you want to talk about your uh, kind of the People's Liberation Big Band premiere and sure. how that came about? Sure. Yeah. The, the original version that we did had um, 
we, we tried to tell the story of the Nutcracker and the Mouse King with it. And we tried to tell sort of the original story using the Tchaikovsky melodies as as the as uh, the jumping off point, right? Um, and uh, yeah, we were looking at very much in, in the jazz tradition of taking taking those tunes and really reworking them, changing them all around, and that worked to our advantage then in trying to tell that that other kind of story that's far more complicated and more messy and all that sort of thing because it was you know totally within our, our the jazz tradition to take those things and make them complicated and messy in whatever way we, we so desired right <laughs> the original the original uh, uh, a version that we did had um, had a lot of improvisation there were there were sometimes there were you know whole sections that were just uh, freely improvised like the battle scene was all, almost completely free improvisation um, of course that doesn't really work very well for dance you know okay. and, you know it works well for musicians to improvise or it works, works well for dancers to improvise to uh, written music you know compose music um, but everybody improvising all at the same time is kind of like you know, it might work, it, but there's no guarantee. <laughs> or it might work every third time or something, you know. <laughs> so that was a really cool uh, musical yeah. concert. It was amazing. Yeah. And then they tied it together with um, narration, which did you and Jeffrey Ruckman yeah. both write it? Yeah, Jeffrey Ruckman and I wrote, wrote the, uh, the narration originally. Which was super fun and funny and, and quirky and very entertaining. Yeah, well, once we, we, we kept a lot of narration with the, um, uh, with the, with our version of it, with the dance version of it, um, a lot of the narration, of course, got cut because we could tell the story through movement, through certain parts of it. But there was still a lot, a lot of places where we just wanted to have the words because it was it was just fun for us. And there are a lot of jokes in it too. There are a lot of just sort of funny jokes that we wanted, right. to, wanted to keep. Uh, do you want to jump into the overture? Sure. So yeah, that, let's go yeah. ahead and show the overture. So okay, um, yes, and this is from our 2014 production. Yeah, 2014. So we'll kind of jump around with some of the clips we share yeah. from different years, but this is 2014. Yeah, so. we've had like lots of different ways of opening the piece um, over the years, and um, and this year we happen to have a Drosselmeyer, who um, who really liked to get these really high heels. You know, I mean they were tall seriously tall heels and um, he could dance in them yeah and so, and so we thought well we should figure out a way to put, make use of that you know so so we opened it up with Drosselmeyer in these enormous heels dude cool before we show that let's just hop in here a lot of people are checking in uh Dave Cooper hi guys Merry Christmas of hey. course Jen's mom Patricia love to you all Jen and Brad Betty Kondo hello Hayes. Uh, we're gonna see yourself Betty <laughs> <laughs> Sam Weisman is in the building and uh, oh yeah, a lot of people are over on the uh, Casey Online Live Music Series page, oh, okay. um, which All is right, great. Thanks. We're gonna yeah, we're gonna be trying um, interacting with people on this feed. Sorry, we can't be on both feeds. Um, but hi to everyone so far, and uh, yeah, let's let's get this thing started with the overture and march. Thank <laughs> you. 
was Christmas Eve. <laughs> had not been allowed into the company parlor where preparations for the stallbound family Christmas were underway. They were sitting in a small, dark back room of the house discussing what gifts Godfather Drosselmeyer might bring when the door opened and finally their mother called them to the Christmas table.
Hello. Okay, just wanted to point out if you happen to see me or Brad or, or Jen kind of pop up onto your screen while we're watching these videos, um, please just take that as part of our live interactive features this evening. We are trying to um, work that out, but if that happens, just enjoy that. Um, thank you so much. We've got more people coming in here. Uh, Sherry Wilson, Olga Patenko, Cece Johns, Darwin Black, and lots of others. Um, so thanks so much for, for watching that. Um, cool. All right. So we're back. Um, Jen and Brad, do you want to lead us into our next video? Well, I, I want to comment um, that those fabulous costumes are designed by Peggy Noland, um, and that was just a really wonderful, uh, wonderful opportunity to have her um, join the collaboration from the get-go when we were kind of building the production. So all the colors and the designs are really, yeah, really fabulous. Yeah, super fun. <laughs> it looks like uh, uh, Zelly says, I want to wear that outfit for Wacky Clothes Day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, I was wondering um, where in uh, the process for the timeline for you two collaborating together, where does this production um, fall in that in that timeline? Well, I think like right after the musical premiere in 2006, um, it was such a cool experience. Um, and we just knew that the next step would be to make it into a dance, uh, music and dance performance. Um, and so it took a few years for that to really take place just because of all the details and all of the kind of, um, all the ideas to come about. Um, and actually that Brad is really kind of co-choreographer in so many ways. Uh, <laughs> I, I wouldn't go that far, no, no. I... <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it, it took a few years. It was a very big production um, for us to do. I think I probably lost, I uh, probably gained some gray hairs and uh, <laughs> lost a lot of sleep. Um, but yeah, so Darwin Black is joining us. Um, so the, the original Nutcracker um, was Randolph Ward. Uh, he danced at Ballet Met. Um, he and I danced at Ballet Met together. Um, and then also uh, Winston Dynamite Brown was our next Nutcracker for the following few years. And then Billy Cannon was our Nutcracker and Darwin Black was our Nutcracker yeah. in 2016. So we've been able to work with some really wonderful artists and I love, um, I love the, the beautiful dancers I get to work with, so. Yeah, and actually I was, uh... I was editing video for, for the production that Darwin was in. And um, unfortunately, we found out that we weren't able to use it because the audio files were corrupted from the, the, that year. So it was, it was really heartbreaking that we weren't able to use some of that, that footage. But um, yeah, the, you know, the footage, uh, it, it's interesting. You know, um, Dan Wayne has been uh, uh, shooting the, these, uh, these uh, live performances with, for us for a number of years. And he's, he's Pro always, bono yeah, he's, he's, he's always wonderful. He's, um, um, but you know, we're, it's mostly archival sort of, sort of footage. We weren't really doing it on the, uh, thinking that there'd be a, like a global pandemic and that we'd all be sort of, uh, presenting all of our, our past works this way at some point, you know? So, so, um, we didn't really, you know, it was more archival than, than as, as a means of, of presenting something, but, but we're really glad that he's been shooting all that. Yes. And, thank you, Dan. <laughs> yes. And by the way, if you want to see, uh, uh, Dan Wayne's, uh, you know, um, I guess, I guess, um, more uh, complete work. He has a great documentary called uh, Big Fur that you can find on, uh, but where, Amazon, I think? I don't know, just, just look it up. Yeah, it's about that's Bigfoot, it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think that the next thing, uh, we're, we're gonna kind of skip ahead a little bit in terms of our the program, because we don't have time for everything, un unfortunately. Um, but we're gonna, um, so what would happen next in the story anyway, is that Godfather Drosselmeyer presents the gifts and he gives Maria Nutcracker which Fritz, played by Jennifer, promptly breaks, um, and then there's a, um, and then there's a big battle that in, ensues where the uh, uh, army of mice come out and and um, and the Nutcracker uh, fights them away and um, and the Mouse King and the Mouse King, the mouse yeah, King. The Mark mouse Sutherland, King. yeah, yeah, beautifully. Instead of seven by. heads, he has seven horns. So that was part uh, of the, yeah. Um, but but we're we're going to skip ahead to the part where a, after this battle where Marie wakes up and and all of her her family's there and this is probably sort of the longest uh, 
story part of it in, in terms of, of just of uh, talking and, and telling a story, but we wanted to include it because within the Nutcracker and the Mouse King original story by E.T.A. Hoffman, there's this story within a story that explains how the Nutcracker came to be and, and, um, and how the Nutcracker, the only way that Nutcracker was once a, a real man and, and he became this sort of grotesque Nutcracker and the only way that he can turn back into being a, a real man is, is to get someone to fall in love with him uh, even though he's just a nutcracker, you know, <laughs> and it fits with a certain kind of archetype of, of fairy tales where, where someone falls in love with an inanimate object. And it turns out that by falling in love with that inanimate object, they've somehow broken a long curse. On That's a classic. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So yeah, the story of the hard nut then is what's going on next. <laughs> Okay, a story of the hard nut, please enjoy. When Marie woke up, she was in her bed with all her family and Godfather Drosselmeyer standing by. Marie was told of how she had cut herself on the glass of the toy cabinet and might have bled to death if mother hadn't gone downstairs to check the lamp. Then Marie told everybody about the seven-horned mouse king and Nutcracker's battle against the army of mice and how he had saved Nutcracker's life by throwing her shoe at the mouse king's head. Well, for a moment, they all just stared at her speechlessly. And then they begin to laugh and ridicule and belittle her in that permanently scarring way that only family can. <laughs> Fritz, who was young and inexperienced at finding his sister's insecurities, gleefully planced around the room, shouting, Look at me! I'm the king of mice! As the rest of the family laughed out their approval, but Godfather Drosselmeyer seemed to take pity on the girl and offered to tell her a story. And this is the story he told. The story of the hard nut. Once upon a time, there was a king, there was a queen, they had a baby, and she was the most beautiful baby in the world. <laughs> they decided to call her the baby princess Perlipat. They were so very happy, until one day, when the king decided he'd like some sausage. Now the queen was overseeing the making of the royal sausages when Madame Mouserinx, who was a mouse, arrived and said, Hey, queen, why don't you give me some fat? The queen, being a gracious soul, said, Why, certainly, have a bit of fat, just a smidge. But no sooner had she said the words than Madame Mouserinx invited her aunts and her uncles and her brothers and her sisters and her seven sons eat the fat also. The queen had to shoo them away. And by the time the mice were sheared, there was barely enough fat left to make any sort of sausage at all. When the king tasted the sausage, he declared it the worst sausage ever and vowed his revenge against Madame Mouserinx and her whole family. So he called for his royal clockmaker and inventor, who happened to share my name, Drosselmeyer, Christian Elias Drosselmeyer. And the king told Drosselmeyer to kill all of the mice.
Russell Byer invented a most effective mouse trap, and the trap managed to kill all of Madame Mouse Ring's aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, and her seven sons. As you might expect, Madame Mouse Rings was furious and vowed in turn that she would exact her revenge against the king through his most treasured progeny, the baby Princess Perlipat. And one night, Madame Mouse Rings managed to crawl into the baby's cream and give her a little bite. Which, as it turned out, happened to be a special fairy tale evil curse bite. And it caused Princess Perlipat's head to become grotesquely large. <laughs> she developed weird, short, stubby legs, grew big green bulbous eyes, <laughs> and a strange stubble appeared on her chin that looked as though it might grow into a big unruly beard in a few years. <laughs> now the king as any wise political figure would, blamed the whole problem on Drosselmeyer, since he was the one who invented the mousetrap. And he told Drosselmeyer that he must break the curse and restore Pearl of Hat's beauty, or else he would have his head cut off. So, Drosselmeyer did some research on the problem. And it turned out that to break the curse on the princess, all he had to do was have her eat a walnut. But it had to be a special nut called the hard nut Krakatuk, and it would have to be cracked open in the presence of the princess by a young man who had never shaved and never worn boots. And he would have to crack it open with his teeth. But on the bright side, if that young man could then take seven steps backward without stumbling, he would get to marry the princess and, as we said, make the royal romance in the royal chambers. <laughs> So, Drosselmeyer went on a search for the hard nut Krakatuk. He searched, and he searched, and he searched. For 15 years, he searched. But he could not find it. Well, eventually, he just decided to return home and have his head cut off. But before returning home to have his head cut off, he thought to pay one last visit to his cousin, Christoph Zacharias Drosselmeyer, in the city of Nuremberg. When he told his cousin of his troubles, his cousin said, You know, I own the hard nut Krakatoa, and my young son is most excellent at cracking nuts with his teeth and at walking backward. And you know, He's never shaved and never worn boots. <laughs> what are the odds? So Drosselmeyer took his cousin's son and the hard nut cracker took and returned to the king and queen in hopes of breaking Madame Mouserink's evil curse. When Princess Pearl apart, who had grown more hideous by the day, saw the young Drosselmeyer, she said, My! He's so handsome. Perhaps he'll crack the hard nut cracker took and we'll get married and make the royal romance in the royal chambers. <laughs> the young Drosselmeyer easily cracked the hard nut with his teeth. Princess Perlipat ate the nut and she became the most beautiful woman in the world. Then Drosselmeyer began taking steps backward. One, two, three, four, five, six. But on his seventh step, he stepped right on Madame Mouserinks, and he squished her, and he fell down. Madame Mouserinks said, eh, 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 you didn't take seven steps, did you? So now you'll have an evil curse on you, and you're going to be ugly, ugly, ugly. And I just gave birth to a mouse king's son with seven horns. And the only way you'll be able to break the curse is to kill the mouse king and get a woman to love you even though you are ugly, ugly, ugly. <laughs> and then she died. Sure enough, the young Grosselmeyer immediately grew an enormous, grotesque head. Big, green, bulbous eyes. 
short, stubby legs, and a big, unruly beard. And the now beautiful Princess Perlipat said, Hey, get him out of here. I'm not going to marry him. He's so ugly, ugly, ugly. And that is the story of the hard nut. here with every all the folks here barbie dirks great holiday memories oh scotty mcbee i do miss cracking nuts with y'all good times <laughs> <laughs> yeah and thanks scotty for, for putting that on the kc online page as well thank you <laughs> latara wilson is here with us oh, yeah. worst, <laughs> worst sausage ever <laughs> We were just commenting on, on how well the Tara dies in that scene. It's a perfect. Madame Mouse Rings, <laughs> yeah, she's the Spanish doll in this production. And um, she's also been the tea doll. She's been in numerous uh, Nutcracker and Mouse King productions. Yeah, and um, numerous Owen Cox Sanskrit yes, productions. Yeah. yeah, we love her. <laughs> so. yeah. Well, thanks everyone for commenting. We'd love to catch up with you. Christy Lambert, so amazing. Oh, John Owen is here. What a treat to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we have next? Well, um, you know, one of the things I wanted to say was um, most Nutcracker productions involve students. Um, and one of the really fun aspects of our production is we work with students um, of Paseo Academy of the Fine and Performing Arts, um, just like very close to where we live. Um, and they have a wonderful uh, dance program there. And um, so we, at the time, Torrance Johnson was the um, dance director and uh, we communicated with him and he thought it'd be a great idea uh, for his students to audition and um, we involved them in the performance and that's been kind of the partnership yeah. ever since. Uh, we love working with the students. Um, it's a really cool opportunity to bring the students and the professional dancers together, um, not just to perform in the production, but for the professionals to coach the students. And um, it's just really a, a wonderful, uh, wonderful collaboration with them as yeah. well. So. Yeah. They're featured as the Merlitons. You won't see their dance um, in tonight's uh, presentation because we don't have very much time, but um, and they're also the mice and the soldiers and they're in the flowers and yeah, so they're, yeah. they have a lot of choreography to learn. <laughs> it's it a is. Lot. It's, it's a, yeah, it's a lot of work. And I, they're, um, actually, they'll, they'll be in the, the next, the Paseo students from 2009. 2009, 2009. will be in, in yes. the next clip we're going to show, the, the uh, Waltz of the Snowflakes. Yeah, we thought we would show the one from um, from the very first production we ever did, which was 11 years ago at this point. Yeah, um, <laughs> and Randolph Ward was the Nutcracker and Lauren Fitzpatrick was Marie. Um, you've been seeing the beautiful Betty Kondo um, in the last clips. Um, and so, yeah, it was the original cast, Laura Jones Walner and Gavin Stewart were mom and dad. Um, it was, that was the year we put it all together. It was a whirlwind. Um, was, Christopher yeah. Barksdale is Drosselmeyer, so yeah. It, yeah, I don't know. We just thought it would be um, the uh, as, as I mentioned before, the um, the video stuff is you know it's mostly shot as with the idea of being archival uh, footage rather than for a presentation. And and this um, so we might have to apologize for the for the video quality, but the the uh, the energy I think of the performance is particularly nice. You know, because being the the first one, you know, there's always a certain certain energy that's that's there. The the first time that you perform something that. Um, that's hard to recapture in, in a way. And, and um, the other thing that I really, really love about this, the, that first production, the 2009 one, is that uh, Lila Wilder, who is Roger Wilder's daughter, um, sang the, the soprano part. She was 12 years old. Um, and the first, the first time she did it with us, she was only nine years old. And so, uh, or the first, as a music, music production, concert. you know? Um, so yeah, in, in this 2009 thing, she was 12 years old and she has a, since gone on to, to wonderful things. She just, uh, we, we think Jennifer mentioned, she just received the Charles B. Rangel Fellowship for International Studies and is, is uh, pursuing her 
a master's degree in, in I guess, international relations. In and, Arabic. Yeah, and... she studies French and Arabic, and, and she's, uh, yeah, it's quite impressive. Uh, we can uh, say we knew her when. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, this is our, our very first uh, production of, uh, of the show, so we hope you'll enjoy this scene. And when, um, and just one more question, um, has this always been performed at JCCC or has it, is it, has it been performed anywhere else? In a bunch of different places. Um, so the first several years yeah. at um, uh, Union Station City Stage Theater, so that's the venue you'll see in just a moment. Um, and then most recently, the last uh, three productions, we were at JCCC. JCCC. One year in 2012, we're at the Folly which was um, a really cool venue. Um, so it's it's had um, different lives. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, please enjoy this first uh, production of Waltz of the Snowflakes.
Okay, let's check back in here. I see that uh, Chloe Abel says, love being a part of this first production, Once Upon a Time. Chloe, <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. Chloe. <laughs> Sam says, so much gear back there. <laughs> and yeah, but, to make space for the Mark tree, I think. That's a, sorry, that's just for Sam's benefit. That's clearly for Sam's benefit. <laughs> And uh, Betty Condo, wow, so fast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So thank you all. Thank all right. Yeah. <laughs> Up next, let's see, what do we have? Well, we're going to show some, uh, some of the Act Two divertisements. Um, and we'll show uh, some of the Spanish dance featuring Latara Wilson. And then we'll show some of the Trey Pack dance. Uh, which with Fernando Rodriguez and um, as the Trey Pack dancer and Waldine Nelson as Drosselmeyer and Winston Dynamite Brown as the Nutcracker. Do you want to talk a little bit about the music for uh, oh, Act Two? Sure, yeah. Um, it, it, there was this sort of um, happy accident that happened as, as uh, in terms of the arranging the music because different people from the band arranged different sections of the, of the, of the piece. Um, and as it as it turned out, I ended up arranging all of the Act One music, just just the way that we divided it up, and then all of the divertisements, which uh, in in the Tchaikovsky score, of course, are sort of representative of different countries and different musical styles. They were all arranged by different uh, different composers, so each one of them had their their own unique kind of approach to to each one of them. And it, it just kind of we never we never planned it that way, but it was just sort of a serendipitous thing that kind of. Kind of worked out to our advantage with it. Um, we, we're actually not going to have time to play a couple of my favorites from those. Uh, Patrick Alonso Conway did a, a really wonderful uh, version of Tea, the, uh, usually the uh, Chinese uh, dance. And the um, Merlatons. And the Merlatons. Oh, oh my so gosh, good. yeah, that one's really, really okay. great. Yeah. And Forrest Stewart did a great Waltz of the Flowers. Waltz um, of the Flowers in 5 4 time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Let's see, we have, um, people are commenting here. Christy Lambert, I need some tinsley sleeves like that for New Year's Eve. Go Snowflakes, great music, singing, costumes, choreography, and dance, making Casey proud. Oh. John Kimball, thanks for going back to the beginning. The real hard nut. The real hard nut. John Kimball was <laughs> yes. the, our lighting designer for the first several years in production. Yeah. And oh man, he knows how much um, work and, stress was involved in it's, putting it all together he was amazing, it's amazing. A, yes it's a lot of work and a lot of cues to keep track of and of man <laughs> we love you moose <laughs> <laughs> olga patinka says mom is this owen cox by darian he remembers a performance at the union station theater this is how his take the stage journey started oh yeah oh. go darian. darian oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you all. It is such a massive um, collaborative effort. This this production, it's it's just incredible, really. It's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, a lot of well, it, it's especially fun. I just you know because there's so many different uh, voices involved with it. I think you know all the different arrangers from the from the big band. Um, you know, and um, you know. Mark is a mouse king at it, and our, we didn't mention Ari Fish or Peregrine Honig, but they both uh, both contributed at costume uh, design as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, Scott Hobart um, and uh, Tom Shaka. Oh yeah, Tom Shaka did the first set design. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so a lot of <laughs> yeah. our first production. Well, yeah, it was our first production with sets. Yes. Yes. We're not usually a set heavy yeah, dance company. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
and uh, cer certainly by Nutcracker standards, it's very sparse. You know, we have a bed and a clock, but it's <laughs> no tree. <laughs> the ETA Hoffman did not have a tree. We're not having that tree. <laughs> cool. Okay, so we've got we've chosen um, one dance to represent this. Uh, so it's the Spanish dance and then the tree pop. Okay, yeah, yes. yeah, we'll just do back to back. I think they're edited together. So. <laughs> cool. Uh, let's find that up. Anything else to say about that? No, let's go ahead and okay. see the dance. <laughs> okay, here we go.
<laughs> wow, that's really fun. Um, let's see, John Walker, thanks so much for sharing. We haven't gotten to see this live yet, but look forward to it when you can perform it again. So original and great dancing. Brian Hay says, yeah, Roger. And Scotty McBee, multiple time, feels on top of one another. Yeah, the multiple time, fun. That is very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that, that, that's just one of our things with the big band. We, we like to give people lots of options for how to count it, you know. So. <laughs> so. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so I think we have a few more left to show. So in Act Two, um, in kind of coming up with this production, we wanted um, the dancers in Act Two that danced the divertissements to be kind of um, members of Marie's family or the dolls that she uh, receives receives as gifts um, in Act One. So all of the characters that you see in Act Two kind of relate to back to Act One. Um, so to for, Marie's personal experience. Yes, her her experience. So um, for example, her mom and dad danced the Arabian dance. Um, which is kind of a, you know, grown up themed, you know, dance. It's rather it's, sensual. It's quite, quite sultry, yes. Um, and, you know, of course the Spanish uh, dancer is, you know, her, the Spanish doll and, and tray pack doll and uh, uh, the tea doll. But so for, for the sugar plum fairy, we decided that, well, Fritz maybe should be the sugar plum fairy, um, which kind of added a, an interesting layer of growing up and things maybe not are as, Clear cut as you know they might seem yeah. to be. Yeah, so, you know, you think about about the story being one about about Marie growing up, you know, and and all that that entails. And and in the you know, as we keep going back to this E. T. A. Hoffman story, there's there's a lot of things that seem to be sort of dangerous about the story in the E. T. A. Hoffman story, um, and which is I think probably true for for most people with growing up, you know, that, that it's hard to navigate. There are certain certain. Um, uh, if not dangerous, just things that are confusing to people as they grow up, you know. And so we sort of present the uh, um, the uh, the Arabian dance, you know, with, with mom and dad there, and and, and uh, the idea that you know that, that uh, um, you know that as Marie grows up, that she's going that there will be these more complicated things in in the uh, emotions that she's feeling toward her Nutcracker, right? Um, and so, um, and then and then the next dance right after it is the dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. You know, with with the idea that that um, things will certainly not be uh, clear. Uh, um, I, I guess the, the things are not going to be just absolutely clear cut in terms of societal expectations or something. You know, and that um, and that the, so that so the fact that that Fritz, you know, and, and Fritz is the only one at the end of the whole thing that doesn't return to his uh, costumes from the first act. You know, Fritz. Fritz continues to be the sugar crumb fairy in the very ending scene, whereas everybody else is returns to sort of their normal, their uh, their uh, beginning costume, I should say, from from Act One. So we'll show you the dance of the sugar plum fairy, followed by the pas de deux, um, and the pas de deux is danced by Betty Condo and Winston Dynamite Brown. Uh, I'm Fritz in the sugar plum fairy scene. So, yeah. um, great. And what year was this one? 2014. 2014. Yeah. So Cecilia was eight months old. She was uh, with a babysitter in the green room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, please enjoy this next uh, selection here.
Wow. Yeah. We have, um, let's see. I, I really apologize if I, apologize if I'm messing up people's names here in the comments. Um, so Jan Fadley says, my all-time favorite sugar plum. Um, <laughs> Patricia says, way to go, Fritz. <laughs> John Owen, who turned the pot into a 50s grinder? Brilliant. <laughs> well, I can answer that question. Jeff Harshbarger did that. Je Jeff Harshbarger arranged the pot of dough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that arrangement. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Cooper says, damn, Mike Stover. <laughs> and Chloe Abel says, bravo. Jen, didn't you have a fake butt <laughs> padding for Sugar Plum the first year, or am I making that up? <laughs> what was the bottom of the big top, actually? Um, Jennifer Tierney and I had padded bottoms for um, the piece with Nate Fours, uh, the, the circus piece, yeah. so, which she was in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We miss you, yeah. Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> and shout out to the drums on that. Um, who is uh, Scotty? Is that right? Scotty yes. B. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Always, always a delight making music with Scotty McBee. Yeah. So, so many great musicians in that in that group. But yeah, Scotty's done done all of them. Done all of all of the Nutcrackers. There's a few people have done all of them. Jeff did all of them. Sam did all of them. Dave Cooper, nice James, James Isaac, uh, Rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Anyway, to, uh, well. <laughs> well, awesome. Thank you all so much for being here with us this evening. Um, it's been really fun. I think we have a final um, piece that we're going to share. Yeah, we just thought we should should actually play the the end, you know, so that we can see uh, Marie breaking the curse of Madame Mousering's evil curse on the Nutcracker. She. Mm -hmm professes her love and he becomes a, a real person and he yeah. becomes the nephew from Nuremberg who is a real person and <laughs> from from the from the uh, no. story of the hard nut story yes yes he becomes <laughs> so yeah just show the anything else you want to say uh, before the end I don't know not that I can think yeah. of okay yeah I thanks thank everybody for joining yeah us. thanks this is this has been fun so Cool. Well, um, I, th I think we'll show the end and then we'll hop back on here and um, kind of wrap it up and, and thank sure. everyone after that. So um, please enjoy um, the end. <laughs> <laughs> Mother was surprised to find Marie asleep in the middle of the day, but woke her to tell her she must get up at once, for her godfather Drosselmeyer had arrived, bringing with him his nephew from Nuremberg. <laughs>
Yay. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you all so much. Let's see. Uh, Christy Lambert says, Jeff tore it up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Brad and Jen from Kathy White. And uh, oh, awesome. Lawrence, thank you so much for a totally enjoyable show. And Forrest Stewart says, fun. This was actually the very best sausage ever. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all so much in the comments and those of us who are watching uh rosie says so glad you did this oh Mary, love the music love the costumes love the dancing it's so fun um so yeah thank you all for being here thank you jen and brad for um putting this together and such a remarkable show i saw it in 2016 for the first time and it's 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 one of my favorite uh, Owen Cox productions are are your collaborations with each other. So I think it's really awesome and special. <laughs> Thank you, Stacey. <laughs> well, any closing thoughts, you two? Well, here's to a really great 2021 ahead. Oh yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> new, year, new stuff. New, new stuff vaccines and, new oh yeah all kinds of and even of though new. even though we can't connect like in person we are you know just so grateful for the connections that we have and all of you out there so yeah thank you right thank you okay thank you all so much for being with us and we'll we'll see you in the new year so have a great night everybody merry christmas and happy new year and happy holiday happy new year <laughs>